Hi there, and welcome to the Projects Distilled YouTube channel where we talk about all things project management. I am so glad that you're here. On this channel, we've talked a lot about artificial intelligence, ChatGPT, Google Bard, things like that, and how to use them for project management. In this video, we are gonna talk about writing a perfect prompt to give you the best result when you engage with artificial intelligence. For this video, I'm gonna use ChatGPT4, that's the paid version. That's because it just is simply superior right now to any of the other artificial intelligence engines out there. Since we're talking about artificial intelligence, I thought I would go right to the source, GPT4, to ask it what, how to create the best prompt. This is what it came up with. You can see there's a list of eight items. I actually had it truncate that. The first list it gave me was like 12 or 13. A lot of it is esoteric, not needed. I asked it to condense the list. This is what it came out with. We're gonna break it into four prompts to start with and then four follow-up prompts because the list of eight really is kind of four and four. And it wasn't complete, so I added some of my own. So let's deep dive into each of these so that you know how to write the best prompt. The first is understand the context. So this is not you understanding the context, this is ChatGPT understanding the context. And you have to give it that context for it to understand how to give you the best response. You need to let it know that you are a project manager or that you are working and requesting answers in a project management context. Because if you think about all of the questions that ChatGPT gets asked every second, they range all over the board. Everything you can imagine is asked of ChatGPT. You want it to narrow the context. The next recommendation for a good prompt is to be specific. What are you looking for? Are you looking for a list, a table, a prioritized list? Tell it exactly what you want. Otherwise, you're going to get just generalities about the subject that you're asking. Provide background information. If you're asking for help with creating a schedule or a budget, you have to give it the background information that you're looking for. It's good at making assumptions, but I guarantee you those assumptions will not be accurate your data will be better than the data that it provides if you're giving it just wildly broad information to work with. Because you're working from a project management context, use the actual terminology. If you're looking for a waterfall type of schedule versus an agile type of um, list or, or group of stories, you need to be specific about what you're looking for. Otherwise, it's gonna make assumptions and they may or not, may not be right. Now, this fifth item is the one that I added be sure that you specify things such as tone, length, amount of detail, be specific. It will give you what you're looking for, but it has to know what that is. Okay, so those are the five things that I would always make sure to include in an initial prompt. The good news about GPT-4 is that it remembers many prompts. I, I don't know what the number is, but it's more than you're probably going to use. So if you open up a brand new window in GPT-4, ask it a question using our prompt techniques that we just went over, you can continue to modify what you ask of it uh, in perpetuity because it will remember that. That said, there are times when it does just kind of lose its brain and may, may forget the context and you're gonna wanna, you may have to start over with some of those things. That's just the state of AI at this time. So what are good follow-up prompts? If you've not gotten the exact response you want, here are some ideas for you. Number one, clarify the format that you're looking for. Is it a bulleted list, a numbered list, a prioritized list? Is it a table? What cells do you want in the table? Be specific, it can do all of those types of things. Number two, be careful of the sensitivity and bias. What this means is there's a lot of uh, political correctness that we need to really take into account as we message things, make sure that that's accounted for. Also, just generally, is the message too direct? Is it too soft? If you have a message that you wanna create for someone and you need to be uh, a little bit stronger in your language because they're not responsive, it can tweak your messages in a way that uh, allows you to have that you know, little more direct, little stronger language. Just ask it. Number three, experiment and iterate. Don't be afraid to, to just throw everything out and say, you know what, I don't like that answer. GPT-4, try again. And it will come up with a completely different answer. And it, there may be some overlaps, but there may be some new things that uh, it hadn't explored before. Always you know, test the limits, explore, use it uh, as much as you want because it is a great tool. And then number four, just make sure that your use of artificial intelligence is in compliance with any kind of legal responsibilities that you have to your employer or to your clients. So let's look at a, an example of a prompt. So you can see I put in there that I'm a project manager, I'm looking for a schedule, and it's for an office opening in Poland. So that gives it some context uh, so that it can understand what persona it's going to be working with. And then I give it a request, please help me identify the basic tasks. So I actually took this prompt, put it into GPT-4, and let it run. Here's what it looks like. 
that's really quite a nice job that it did. So this is a, an okay prompt. I'm gonna show you a more detailed, more specific, and what I would consider a better prompt. And let's see and take a look at the difference in the results that we get from these initial prompts. So here's a more detailed prompt. It's the same scenario, but here I'm giving it a start date, um, giving it more details around who I am and what I'm looking for. I also specify that I'm looking for a list and I want it in table format. Let's see those results. Also very good. So it's in a table format. It's got a task ID, which is great. But when I take a look at the initial results and these results, the initial results are actually quite good. Uh, and so if I'm looking at this as a starting place, I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to take the results from the first and I just want to make some tweaks to them. So what would that look like? What would a follow-up prompt be? So here's an idea for a follow-up prompt. I'm just asking it to put it into table format. I'm giving it a name and I'm giving it a start date. There you go. So that's a, that's a really decent result. Now, these dates and these estimates are going to be wildly off, but we asked it to give it its best shot. You're going to want to validate everything that comes out of ChatGPT. That said, you can see the power of ChatGPT and by using smart prompts, being thoughtful about the way you ask things, it can create a really quite good starting place for you as you use artificial intelligence as your project helper. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. Thank you for joining us today.